so what's up everybody so anybody in pro tools land this um i'm gonna i'm gonna get definitely back to the channel i got scolded i'm just joking they didn't scold me but they were encouraging you know sometimes uh you get encouragement and um, my nieces and my nephew big shout out to you guys i started to slack in uh in the youtube channel and and they said you got a lot of views. You got all this going on. Why are you not? Why are you slacking? And uh, um, I'm going to be very honest. I, I had something happen this year that was that was rough, and um, a lot of things changed in life. I started working with some other studios and and doing one on one classes, and and by the time I got around to a video, I was beat. Um, just so that's no excuse, but it it really I had a little bit of a incident with a person. A creative person and um, maybe I'll open up more about that if you've ever had that happen where somebody came into your life and sort of like discouraged you to the point where you're like dude why am I even doing this so that happened to me um, but by the grace of God I am still here doing my thing and and uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about some stuff that can be useful to everybody this is a technique I want to go through for the next few weeks and start showing you things you might not even know you have in the box. Um, it's more about understanding and technique and understanding and listening and understanding what you have at your disposal. So today we're going to be talking about the channel strip and Pro Tools. And I want to talk to you about a certain, um, just a certain thing that it does that I don't think a lot of people understand it does. So... I'm going to show you on here, on this Portico channel, this thing right here is a, is a filter. So it filters and it tells the compressor how many frequencies or what frequencies we're going to start compressing. That is actually a built-in sidechain on this compressor. So is if I go like this, that's 20, so that's pretty much off. That's 20 hertz and, oh, I'm sorry, guys. So that's, this is a 20 hertz. And it goes all the way up to 250. So what's that doing? What that's doing, and we use these for mastering. We use these for, for mixing. And I'll show you how it sounds at the end of this video. But you can do the same thing in the box. And I think a lot of times when I was early on in compression and understanding compression, nobody told me about this. Nobody said, hey, man, you can set a side chain to, to this or that, and you can only compress these frequencies or, or, the, or just a certain amount of the compression. So the basic channel strip in Pro Tools does that. And I'm going to show you where. So if you go over, and let's say we set this back to where it is. Okay, let's set the ratio. Now, here's the thing, okay? So you're seeing expander gate, okay? You're seeing compressor limiter. So number one, you have an expander and a gate. Okay, we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to go through this whole thing over a week. And even if you are uh, been doing this for 40 years, I mean, you might not know that, you know, the compressor has this option. Because it took me like eight months to realize it. So here's your ratio. So the higher the ratio, the, once it goes past this threshold, it's going to crush it down. Okay, now today's music is hit pretty hard, man. And a lot of the times what people say to me is like, Doug, man, why, why is somebody so-and-so's record sound so much bigger than mine? And the reason it sounds bigger is because most of the time, if we're new in mixing, myself included, when I was new to this, I would just slam a limiter on it. Like I would put the new, the, the Ozone 9 on it or something. And now we have, you know, these dangerous tools that are tweaking things in a way that may not be beneficial to the project. Um, I'm not against services that are for $5 if you need that and you just want to get it louder. But I'm going to show you how you can make sure to to keep your bass intact when you're compressing. So today we're we're using an actual bass played by a gentleman named Kevin Ryan. He plays a lot with uh, a, a gentleman that I work with named Dave Marco, and this is on the Mark Nutter album. And this was actually sent to me to to you know work on, and and so we're going to get into that. But 
I, I was thinking, man, I could really show you how a side chain compressor works. So that's what this whole video is about. So on the channel strip, and probably on most channel strips, whether it's Logic or FL, I don't know about FL or Reason, somewhere along the line, you can find a plugin that has a side chain built in. So if you go over to this tab here, this is the side chain built in. So watch how bad this bass sounds when I do not touch that. Check it out. It's just crushing the snot out of it. So that's that's compressed. No compression. Or close a little bit of compression. Lot of compression. Horrible compression. Okay, so as you're seeing, I'm moving the threshold, messing with the ratio, messing with the attack and release. I'm not getting any kind of awesome, wow, this is the best bass I've ever heard results. Now, I'm saying that for a reason. It's really hard to, to understand how to compress that bass and understand it in the context of a mix. What I've, what I've come to know as a mixing engineer is I got to get that bass to sit in the mix with everything else. So a lot of times you'll have a kick drum that's like really big. You'll have a bass that's really big. You'll have strings that are really big and they got a big low end. And then you got pianos that got big low end and all that stuff's fighting for space. So understanding the better the compression can be or the more you can control that compression and you can just allow the bass to be the bass in the arrangement, the better off you are. So check this out whole reason we're doing this video so on the channel strip there's this little thing over here now let's push play without it engaged cool compression right it's 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 pumping a little okay so you got a little pump going on and people go man i hate that you know the number one thing that i used to do when i just got into engineering is people be like man it's over compressed you know, and it's like, I try to tell people it's not over compressed, it's compressed wrong. It's not, it, it the top is okay. The, the finger picking was okay. That frequency range was okay. But you're hearing those sub frequencies from that instrument being pushed back. So how do we get that to not be the case? We're going to go to this thing, which we all have used this plugin millions of times, but this is what it is. So watch what this filter does. So what I'm what I'm showing you on screen here is this filter frequency, as long as this is set to internal, that is the internal side chain on that compressor. There's people right now that I know that are professional mixing engineers that have never, ever seen this knob on that channel strip. So the thing is, is now I can take this and I can set it to a point where I believe that the compressor will benefit from it not compressing those frequencies. So think about it this way. This knob is telling that compressor from 137.9 hertz and down to not compress that. So let's say you just want to, you know, compress just the top snap. It's 500 and down. It's not going to compress that either. So that's the frequency of the filter. Now, if you're new to audio, I hate my phone. My phone goes zzz, 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 through the whole system. So sorry if you just heard that. But what I can do is I can get a lot more compression and I can get a lot more control on the things that I want to control. Okay. So anything I want to leave alone and what it does perception wise is it gives the low end this big, huge sound and it actually tucks in the things. So it, it, it not only um, you know, buys you real estate in the mix, it can even out a base, it can, it can, uh, you know, create depth in the stereo field, and it can give you this perception, like how they get that low end to sound so huge. So without me rambling on any longer, let's see what it sounds like.
See how the bottom stays there? Now, let me take off the uh, filter and watch how crushed this thing is. Filter on. Is that not the coolest thing you've ever heard in your life? It is to me because now from 426 hertz and down, I'm leaving that low end alone because it's, it doesn't need compressed. But what needs compressed is that top. That top sounds like it sounds out of control. But now, obviously, there's other there's other ways to do this. But but that's the most natural way to do it. OK, and I've learned that you can buy a lot of a lot of real estate in the top end where all the percussive stuff sits, where all the snare drum stuff, the vocals, the, um, you know, all the stuff in that that 400 and up. That's very important where a vocal sits well. Um, everything sits well, you know, so synth and strings and the piano playing. And then you can get that to sit even. Now, the key is, is you got to use that that kind of filter and, and side chain to just allow the the instrument to be the instrument and you can get away with a lot more compression like i said to build headroom for your other instruments so let me let me show you that in the hardware version and then we're going to end the video but that's trick number one with the channel strip and pro tools i'm going to come back with all kinds of cool stuff you can do with this my name is doug jenkins from imixandmaster.com i'm thankful that my niece and my nephew and, and their friends got on me about videos so let's try that same thing with hardware before we leave so check this out so on here it's i would say i was about now here's what's funny on the plugin I can actually be more versatile and roll it off to about 426. On these I'd have to go all the way up to 250 and that's where it stops. So plugins, you know, they have their place for sure. So let's try it. Let's see what we get. Give it a little API back this out so you can see that hold on a second shout out to freddy for letting me use this api dude listen to that thing that's cheating that sounds pretty good man now watch this let's use both let me turn this back down. Now it's compressing too much. So I'd still work on it a little bit, but good starting point. So I'm going to bypass it and then end the video. So here we go. Off. Oh my gosh. Listen to this one more time. It got skinny. It was out of phase for a minute there. That's a whole other video. That's unbelievable. Totally bypassed. Oh, man. Is that not crazy? Now, I want to show you this, okay? When people say, hey, Doug, what do you think about this plugin or that plugin or this? I want to end the video like this. There's a JJP on that bass, and I am a absolute fan of that dude. He has awesome plugins, but that's literally after the fact. So, so a lot of times, and I want to get into these videos too, but a lot of times 
you know, somebody will send me something for mastering and I want to just tell them like, man, if we could just get in on that bass, you can see obviously what just took place. That bass became something big. We shelved it. I meant we, we high passed it to that side chain. We allowed that low end to come out. Whether you have hardware or whether you have stock plugins, you can do that kind of compression. So yeah, just think about that next time you're mixing a song and you're you're messing with the low mids and the low end you can get a lot better result leaving that low med, low mid and low end alone so yeah next week i think i'll talk about paul Tex and how to shape that so my name is doug jenkins i mix if you want to send me something send me something i appreciate you guys being super patient with me through the last year year and a half and we're it's go time now so i got some time i i got some time to do videos i've slowed down um covid if you're out there um i pray the best and i pray everybody's safe so we'll see you guys peace all right i'm good i think i'm good oh check out my my exit hold on a second so this is a studio let's see if i can show you this real quick let me see nope i'm still you see how i'm getting used to this stuff Hold on, hold on, hold on. How do I do this? Is it this? Oh my gosh, look at you ruined the whole video. I think it's this. Okay, yeah. So check this out. So this is the studio that um that I've been helping with. So there's a lot of routing. We got multiple rooms, so I'm actually mastering out of this studio as well. And uh that's got two MCI boards and there's a ton of equipment up there. So when that gets going, we're going to do our best to do as many videos as we can on the hardware. And uh, there is a totally different sound up there. There's some incredible equipment, things that, that uh, you know, I was, I was pretty, pretty pumped about. The On Fairchild, um, some tube tag stuff, so we can get a whole different sound up there. So once again, my name's Doug Jenkins. I mix N, the letter N, master.com. We'll see you guys.